Take a good look at this painting. What do you immediately notice? I bet it's the Jollibee fries. It's famous. It's a commodity at this point. It's everywhere. We see it in our televisions, in billboards occupying our skylines, in our personal devices. It's safe to say that there is not a Filipino on this planet who does not know this piece of food. But back to the painting. What does the fries entail? Why are the colors beyond the food so blue? Is there a message beneath this gloomy surface? Hi, I'm Tim, and join me in finding the answer to the question. What an art is this? The happiest place on earth painting is a figurative art by a prominent contemporary Filipino artist, Elmer Borlongan. Borlongan received the Cultural Center of the Philippines 13 Artist Awards in 1994, which led him to his prominence, and since, his works have been most widely exhibited and most sought after at auctions among Southeast Asian countries. Borlongan describes his artwork style as figurative expressionism, and it is clearly observed in this painting I've shown you. This painting, entitled The Happiest Place on Earth, shows a person eating french fries from a popular Filipino fast food chain, Jollibee. In case you haven't seen it yet, it's clear as the day. This art obviously depicts neoliberalism. You may be wondering, how so? Let's discuss it further. The artist behind the painting, Elmer Borlongan, has his fair share of experiences in both urban and rural areas in the Philippines. His early work is known for its usage of figures in urban settings. According to the online site Hiso UR, after he moved from Manila to the province of Zambales, his later works mostly featured people and life in rural settings as well, but with the same tense energy which characterizes his urban setting artworks, a thematic contrast. From his description in Pinto International's official website, Berlangan's work is part of major collections, among them include the Fukuoka Art Museum, Singapore Art Museum, Pinto Art Museum, among many others. He came up against several phases of food insecurity. As stated in an article published by Arts Help, a digital arts publisher, Borlongan's exposure to the poor areas provided him with much of the imagery that would become the subject of his later works. Borlongan is known as keen to represent the humor implicit in the day-to-day -day struggles of people and their resilience against the face of economic challenges. As this has contributed greatly to shaping his perception towards life, his choice of subjects and themes evoked empathy. Jollibee is one of the famous fast food restaurants in the Philippines. We recognize Jollibee as the symbol of joy. But as harmless as these fries may seem, they also represent an antithesis to joy. Neoliberalism Neoliberalism is an ideology that wants to keep the state out of economics as little as possible and promotes the market as the primary regulator of economic activity. The first manifestation of neoliberalism in the Philippines was the World Bank Structural Adjustment Program, which was implemented in the early 1980s to increase the economy's capacity to service the country's enormous external debt. In an article published by Walden Bellio in the Transnational Institute, the neoliberal perspective won ideologically by default during the Aquino administration, when there were no credible domestic alternatives and the presence of international economic developments that influenced the thinking of the middle class and elites. At the turn of the 21st century, neoliberalism has shaped global food policies. In an article written by Megan Blake, published under GeoFoodie, food waste is one of the many effects by neoliberal governances' pursuit of and prioritization of market efficiencies, which cast the value of food not as a medium of commensurability that aids in the formation of social interaction, or as a medium of nutrition that aids in health, but rather as a sole means of profit through its monetary value. From the same article published in Arts Help about this artwork, it has been reported that food services hit up to 26% of the total food waste every year. From a food waste case study conducted by the World Wildlife Fund, in the Philippines, 86.2% of biodegradable waste is food waste. Fast foods and restaurants, like Jollibee, have become the faces of the country's food insecurity. This shall lead us to beg the question, is it still the happiest place on earth despite its deceiving representation of neoliberalism, the modern world's striving force of food insecurity? 
The artwork itself is a good example of how neoliberalism adopts. For instance, during the pandemic, the poorer sections of the society struggle with financial challenges. This has affected the sustainability of their livelihood, which has then led to a global food crisis. As a matter of fact, the issue has always been not only about a lack of food production, but also the accessibility to it, plus the addition of income inequality and economic instability to the equation. It is becoming as unironically funny and sad how this budget-friendly symbol is turning into luxury right before our very eyes, as it is alarming how we are struggling under the grasps of neoliberalism without everyone being made aware of it. The irony presented in the painting is intended to emphasize not only food scarcity, but also the current social and economic issues in the Philippines, which are all indirectly caused by neoliberalism. However, there are many circumstances in which this neoliberal era makes itself be perceived and felt in the world of art as well. As many scholars, including David Harvey in his book entitled A Brief History of Neoliberalism, have argued, Neoliberalism is a form of accumulation by dispossession that must continuously appropriate and commodify non-capitalist entities to survive and expand. And, art has unfortunately fallen victim to the commodification brought about by neoliberalism. As Natalie Heinich mentioned in the article published in the 10th volume of the journal Art Margins entitled Art Under Neoliberalism, commodification of art has always existed because artists have always expected to make money by putting their creations available, be it through direct collaborations with clients or through the intervention of an art establishment. Indirectly, neoliberalism has resulted in the transformation of some contemporary art but not all of it, into a luxury product, analogous to the yachts, watches, and overpriced handbags that individuals who have taken advantage of the financialization of the economic world use as an outward sign of wealth. Any form of art expresses a figurative image that most people are driven to perceive what is represented by the art itself. It's a good way of addressing a certain issue. The chosen subject of the art draws attention and may raise a question regarding the implied meanings conveyed by art. It is very important to understand art and see it through different perspectives or a theoretical lens. In that way, we'll become more aware of the situation depicted in the painting. This is what the painting is all about. If you take time to analyze Elmer's artwork, you'll realize how close it hits home. That whatever situation we put ourselves in, we still work our backs off to indulge in these fries no matter how limited the bites we get. With these realizations at hand, we ask ourselves, should the most famous Filipino bee still hold its immortal brand as the symbol of the happiest place on earth when it is slowly becoming a reflection of the socio-economic challenges that constantly sting us now? The answer is staring right back at you. Thank you for joining me in yet another intellectual quest for this video. If you enjoyed overthinking with me, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. This has been Tim, and as always, stay curious.